right, we're making four products simultaneously. On the far side, we're making a sand. And then here we have our half inch rock. We then over here have a dirty chip product. And on the other side, we have a three quarter inch rock. All these products will get combined in the hot mix plant when they make asphalt. So here we are at the mining end of the project. Just a few short weeks ago, this was all covered in trees. What the client did was tested the core material below the surface and saw that it was suitable for asphalt aggregates. Since then, they went ahead, removed some of the trees that were in the way, removed the topsoil so we can go through and extract the aggregates. So as you see over here, we have our two front end loaders. We're running a 980G old vintage loader, and then we have a brand new 982 cat that we're running to feed this plant. Right now we're producing aggregates at about 450 to 500 tons per hour throughput. So this loader right here is a 980G. And on this project, there's actually a very interesting differentiation between the two loaders. This is a 2000 model. We purchased it new and it's been in service for us for about 22 years now, feeding these aggregate plants. The other loader over there is a brand new 2022 Caterpillar 982. So this loader is roughly the same size, a little bit bigger bucket, a little bit bigger counterweight, lots more power, lots more creature comforts. It's just really cool when you have both of them on a job site. You can see the difference in the progress that the OEMs have come through as far as operator comfort, safety, fuel efficiency, etc. you can see where the raw material comes out of the feed hopper and into that first screen. Straight ahead, you can see where all the rock, anything over that quarter inch, as we said, goes over to the cone crusher. From there, hits the overhead, where it goes through another vibratory screen and segregates out any rock finds or chips that need to go into the chip pile. The two rock products then get separated and crushed and sized down into their corresponding sizes and head out to the piles. So right here is that three quarter inch by half inch rock. What this does is when they mix it into asphalt, it gives it a good structure. When you look at this, there's some round rock, some fractured rock. Different DOT specs are gonna require a different percentage of fracture that allow the aggregates to bind together and give a longer lifespan to the asphalt in its final use. The next pile that we're talking about is often called crusher chips or dirty fines or whatever. There's lots of industry jargon really depends on who you're working with, who you're working for, what they call it. But as you can see, this has an extremely high fracture rate, and as you dig deeper into the pile and as it gets loaded out into the asphalt plant, a lot of this fine particulate dust on my hands, that, that real crushed rock dust, is also gonna help uh, bind everything together nice and tight and give a really long lifespan to the asphalt. So in this last rock pile, this is our half inch rock, and this acts as a structural intermediary between the crusher fines, chips, and that three quarter inch rock. What it does is just bridges the structural gap, really acts as great filler material to help bind everything together. So the last product we'll look at is often referred to as natural fines, natural sand, what have you. Once again, depends where you're at. But as you can see, all the rocks in here are round just as they were deposited millions of years ago. 
There's really no modification or anything done to them through hydraulic sizing. They're simply screened out so we can get after the rock, which is really what we're after.